Welcome back to the report. The violence in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula climbed to new heights last Saturday following the beheading of three Egyptians by the armed group supporters of Jerusalem. The three were accused of being informants for the Israeli state. This is not the first action of this type. The fall of President Mohamed Morsi has seen an intensification of violence by armed groups, attempted assassinations and the infiltration of Israeli intelligence forces into the area. Nasli Tazi takes a look back at the history of this politically fraught territory. The battle over the Egyptian Sinai climbed to new heights last Saturday following the publication of a video on YouTube purportedly showing the beheading of three Egyptians by armed militant group Ansar Beit al maqdis active in the Sinai Peninsula. The four native Bedouins featured in the video are shown confessing to conspiring with the enemy after each was approached by Israeli security agents and promised financial reward in exchange of their cooperation. Sinai-based Ansar Beit al maqdis's video also raised a litany of accusations against the Egyptian state, vowing to weed out local informants which state forces depend upon for intelligence. Military operations in the Sinai terrain have long been a fiery topic of debate, following the signing of the Camp David Accords mandating Israel's withdrawal from the peninsula in 1979. Some analysts insist that the latest attacks on alleged informants should not come as a surprise, given Sinai's geographic anchoring that binds it to the Gazan Strip, Israel and the Gulf of Aqaba, and its value as a transit avenue through which oil and liquefied natural gas passes. The deepening crisis appears to have arisen in the wake of civic and political unrest in Egypt, prompting change across all major population centres in the country. The broad military operation that followed the killing of 15 Egyptian border guards on the Sinai-Israeli border in August 2012 has seen Israel authorise increasing numbers of Egyptian troops deployed beyond the terms of the 1979 peace treaty. In spite of Egypt's security campaign, persistent militarisation of the geographically contested area has only placed locals at greater risk, as illustrated by the latest crisis. Egyptian authorities have long been accusing armed groups and Palestinian insurgents operating in the area of exploiting the security vacuum in Sinai, which has only grown substantially larger in the wake of the Egyptian revolution. Yet the envisaged sweeping military campaign has failed to both prevent armed fighters from advancing further and the infiltration of Israeli intelligence into the Sinai foreland. Nazli Tazi, The Report. In the studio to discuss this with me, I still have Dr. Rebwa Fatah, Director of Middle East Consultancy Services, and on the line from Sinai, freelance journalist Mohamed Sabre. Uh, welcome to the programme. Uh, Mohamed, let me go to you. You're on the ground there. There's been a, a, an incredibly unstable um, situation uh, for many, many months now. Can you describe what's going on to us? That's mess here over Sinai. It has been like one year uh, attacks uh, between militants and between the Egyptian security, including army troops and uh, the police, uh, the police force all over almost uh, the northern Sinai, uh, with no result. Still, uh, the military, uh, the, still the, the militant attacks on the security, including the army and the police going on in Sheikh Zweed and Rafah. Uh, still, uh, random strikes uh, all over the villages around those two cities because, you know, the militants still exist and the Egyptian security can't find them and the everyday fake news about uh, catching uh, or arresting uh, many of them, killing many and uh, 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 injuring many of them. It's uh, nothing but fake news. So uh, the civilians uh, who are the ones who pay the tax for this uh, attacks between the security and the militants. And what is it that, that that they want? Is this is this in part because of the the kind of uh, the 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 failure of the uh, of the Egyptian revolution? Is this a reaction to that failure? Yeah, it's it's a reaction, clear reaction to 
the new uh, revolution or named revolution of June 30. It's a clear reaction of uh, uh, toppling Mohamed Morsi down. Uh, they wanted to make uh, Sinai as Islamic State, but they can't. Okay. Rebo, do you, do you think that the Egyptian state has lost control over the Sinai now? I mean, there's no doubt about that. I think there is uh, Egypt in the last few years mm, has been through turmoil and, uh, you know, the security, this created the security vacuum and the security vacuum maybe in Sinai it is, is more uh, pronounced than other parts because you still see the security va vacuum in Cairo and uh, the current government's approach is not really uh, appropriate by eliminating all the other groups and especially Juan Muslim in calling them terrorist groups and so on. I thought it would have been um, a better approach if, if, you, if you bring all the other groups, anyone who believes a, a peaceful political process into the political process in order to stabilize the country. But uh, for, some reason, for some reason, the CC's government decided to uh, eliminate all the other groups from the, the power. And this is the result. And of course, uh, it's not just Egypt. Maybe they've been motivated by the success of Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, and maybe other groups in North Africa and so on, and maybe Al-Shabaab in the south of them. So it's, it's not really an isolated uh, mm -hmm. incident. Let me just ask, uh, Mohammed, um, uh, Rebbe is saying here in the studio that perhaps these groups have, have, gained, um, have gained a kind of momentum. Uh, from the rise of the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq. Uh, do, you, do you read it like that? Uh, I think it's the same ideology, and there are some personal links because there are some guys and youth from here in Sinai, from Arish and from Sheikh Zwaid and Rafah, where the, uh, the attacks exist went already to Syria and Iraq and still fighting there, some killed in the fighting, uh, some still fighting with ISIS, and some of them told that they are, in, uh, uh, they are connected to these groups, uh, especially Ansar Bayt al-Maqdis group, but still not linked directly uh, 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 I mean, Bay'a for ISIS, not yet, because there are initial uh, conflicts between them. Okay. Um, Rebot, what, what do you think um, would now be um, a solution to this? And, and what role do you think that the Israelis are playing here? We read about uh, Israeli infiltration. Is that true? Um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure, but um, obviously Israel would be worried. I mean, you would be worried about the security situation degrading in Sinai because Sinai, you know, is just like across across Israel. Um, it's like uh, Turkey and, and Islamic State in, in Syria and Iraq. I think Israel has every right to be vigilant, but whether Israel can, I don't know, if there's international law, uh, can infiltrate into Sinai. I don't really know yet. Uh, Mohammed, to what, what ex to what extent are the Israelis intervening in this? Sorry? To what extent is the Israeli state uh, interfering in the events in the Sinai? Yes, sure. Yes, sure. Israel is a part of the scene here in Sinai because, you know, they are arranging everything with the Egyptian uh, force because, you know, in the sea zone, which is like uh, tens of kilometers uh, near the borders, the Egyptian troops and uh, equipment are not allowed to be there. But it went like one year ago uh, after the insurgency started. So must be uh, taking a permission from Israel to be there. And there are still uh, drones, uh, strikes in Sinai, but some targets which are jihadis, uh, they are targeting in Sinai. And there is a very different angle. The spies or the, the, the guys who are cooperative with the Israeli Mossad 
we hear every day of them who are being slaughtered by Ansar Betulmux and other groups. How, pa how powerful is this particular group and, and how many other groups are there operating? Uh, there are some groups, but the most famous one is ABM, uh, 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 Ansar Jerusalem group. And uh, about uh, a bone Bedouin sources who are uh, really close to these groups, they said it's like tens of guys, not so many, but they are uh, very well trained outside Sinai or outside Egypt. I see. Who's training them? Well, I think there are 15,000 uh, international insurgents in uh, Iraq and Syria. So that, I mean, you do expect a few hundreds to be in Sinai if there's a security vacuum and they, uh, if they can move around, why not? I mean, especially that uh, now Egyptian, the Sisi's government shown uh, hatred to all these uh, uh, Islamic groups in, in, in Egypt and uh, Sisi is seen by many Muslims that uh, as, a, as a military, leading a military coup against the Islamic State of Mursi. So you would expect within that security vacuum these groups can find um, place, uh, and there are a lot of tribes, a lot of Badoons in that, in that region. Um, and so it's, it's, it's often said to be the case that when groups like this are, are difficult for a state, and, and let's face it, the Egyptian state is, is pretty determined yes, here, yes, yes. Um, that the difficulty is because there is sympathy for the groups among the, the um, local population. Do you think that's the case here I, or I not? Think, I think that's, that's the case. Um, uh, I mean, it's... It, that's the same in, in Iraq. I mean, like in Iraq, the Sunnis were mainly supporting, you like to know, it was a rebellion of the Sunnis. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were not expecting Islamic State to be so radical, but now by, maybe they changed their mind. Some of them already changed their mind. But the same, same in Egypt. And these, these groups have seen, uh, maybe they voted for an Islamic State, and Morsi, they established an Islamic State through the procedure which has been recognized, called democratic, called voting. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, a CC comes and, and remove that government, say we start again, we change the constitution, we start again. And obviously, um, and, and they are not allowed back in the political process. They label even the mildest one called terrorists. Mm -hmm. Um, you would expect um, they, they try to find some small groups in the region. They try, not, not necessarily in Sinai, in other parts of uh, Egypt, they try to find international links to get training and go around and invite people. It's not unusual, really. OK, well, that was Reb Fatah wrapping up that report on the Sinai. And I'd like to thank him and, of course, uh, Mohamed Sabri, who joined us from the Sinai Peninsula itself. Um, and that's about all that we've got time on for today. But uh, do remember that uh, you can keep with us uh, on Twitter by following at Islam Channel and by using the hashtag the report. We're back tomorrow evening at the same time, but for now we'll leave you with footage of pilgrims taking part in Hajj, symbolically stoning of the devil on the second day of Eid al-Adha yesterday. Until tomorrow, good night.